It is 8.30 and good Tuesday morning. Welcome to the WLBB Community Voice on News Talk 1330 FM 106.3. Streaming live online at Newstalk1330.com. This morning we are on the News Talk 1330 WLBB Facebook book page where you can see my lovely young guest who has joined us all the way from the City of Gold. Um, I'll introduce you to her in just a second. Today is the second day of the second week of the early voting period ahead of the November 7th municipal elections. Now ballots in the City of Illerick are going to feature... Uh, incumbent council member for Ward 1, Shirley Marchman, and incumbent for Ward 2, Matthew Momtahan, um, but they're both unopposed for their bids uh, for re-election. A four-person race for mayor, so that means everybody in the city is invited to uh, to vote for that one. And two people qualified to fill the vacant Ward 3 city council seat following Leslie McPherson's resignation in order for her to uh, run for mayor. Now, uh, one candidate, Philip Butch, a chiropractor, he was on the program, I think, about a month ago. So after today's show, you can go back and watch that one and compare with our guest this morning, Stephanie Warmoth. Good morning. Good morning. And congratulations on qualifying. Thank you. Apparently, you didn't have a bad history or bad background or anything. Let no, you, let no, you get on the ballot. no, sir. Not at all. Well, very good. <laughs> well, give us the, the who, what, where, when, why, and how of Stephanie Warmoth. Um, so, I'm a Georgia girl, born and raised. Uh, I was born in Marietta, grew up out in Conyers, later moved to Dallas, and then eventually landed out here in the West Georgia area. Um, I married my husband. Uh, 18 years ago, we share four children together. Uh, 17 is Tatum, and 15 is Kinley, and then there's my 12-year-old, Joe Nate, and uh, my 8-year-old, Charlie, and all four of them attend Villarica Cluster Schools, um, and we're involved with Parks and Rec with various sports and activities with that as well. Um, I opened my photography studio in... 2013 let me get my dates right uh 2013 i opened my studio in downtown villarica have been there for 10 years now and i'm growing and thriving as far as the business goes even with some hiccups with with uh with covid we still manage to keep things going Uh, i've been involved with the city of villarica throughout the years of being in business. I uh, served on the Main Street Advisory Board uh, for seven years. Uh, Two of those years I served as vice president. Uh, And I just learned at that point how much I enjoyed service um, and volunteer work. And it, it, it got me and so, you know, I continued to work um, with main street uh for those seven years and then i'm currently serving as president over at reed plantations hoa Um, so working with the board of directors to make sure that our community is properly served uh there as well um and yeah, so I think that about sums it I, up. It does sum it up. Yeah, I, don't, I don't have any other questions. You, you went ahead and, and went right to them. So what was the motivation? I mean, you talked about you know you, you were on a board, uh, the Main Street Board. Actually, tell me about your role on the Main Street Board. What, what did you learn about downtown businesses, or what did you see maybe as part of that board? What, what, what do you take out of that experience? Well, I enjoyed... Okay, let me back up. So I I did learn all about the different events and activities and things that the city puts on and what it took to make those events happen. Uh, and it's a, there's a lot a lot more to it than the average person would think. Um, and that was something that I had learned was what all is involved with that and the importance of that for those businesses as well. All right, Stephanie Warmoth, our guest on this morning's Community Voice Program, one of two candidates um, vying for the uh, vacant Ward 3 seat on Villarica City Council. Would you have um, challenged Leslie McPherson in two years when that seat came open naturally, or were you just kind of motivated when you saw that it was open? I don't know that it's fair to say I would challenge her. For me, it was about timing. Um, And so maybe, you know, in two years, maybe if she had decided to, I would have. But I think Leslie's done a good job, um, especially with keeping her constituents informed. Uh, That is something that that I like about what she has done for sure. So you you hope to carry that on too as far as keeping... I do. And how would you go about that? Uh, Well, I think that it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just a quick little 
email blast to, you know, here's here's what's being shared from our mayor, uh, whoever that may be. Um, and here is, here's where my stance is on it. And just something brief and and keep it moving. Again, Stephanie Wormuth, our guest on this morning's Community Voice. If you have any questions or comments, please uh, feel free to post those on the News Talk 1330 WLBB Facebook page, and I will try to uh, take a look at those throughout the show. Uh, what do you see as the role of the city council person? What is the job? What are the major duties um, and the significance in, in Villa Rica? Because in some cities, it might be a little different. Right, right. So, I mean, as I see it, uh, it's talking to those constituents and finding out where their concerns are and where where, where they would like to see things go. Um, being part of making those decisions that impact everybody in Villarica, not just in Ward 3, but impact everybody. Um, and so I think it's important since you're making those kind of decisions that you know where your constituents stand as well. How much uh, experience do you have uh, with a budget? Well, I'm a business owner of 10 years, so there's that budget. Uh, and then, of course, being part of the HOA, uh, there's the budget for the neighborhood as well. Very good. We're going to take our first break. And again, if you have any questions or comments for uh, Stephanie, I do encourage you to post those to the News Talk 1330 WLBB Facebook page. My name is Colin Worthington. Community Voice is brought to you by Tanner Health System and Oak Mountain Academy. Oak Mountain Academy is an innovative school of academic excellence celebrating a 61-year legacy. I'm Patrick Uran, head of school, inviting you to join us for our annual fall festival this Friday at 3.30. Join us at the OMA gym for food, fun, and fellowship. Costume, games, raffles, and competitions are just a few of our fall festival exciting activities. For more information, visit us at oakmountain.us. Discover your journey at OMA. Prepare, explore, and achieve. Health is a journey. It's making better choices, even when it's not easy. It's taking care of yourself and the people you love. At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org. All right, 838. Welcome back to the WLBB Community Voice News Talk, 1330 FM 106.3. A couple people checked in who were, uh, who were watching this morning. Apparently, this Leslie McPherson for mayor, <laughs> she's checked in. And uh, Ashley Marie. Okay. I'm guessing you know her. I do. A hey, big Ashley. heart from her. Um, let's see here. Back in July, residents of Darden Street um, uh, kind of made it a standing room only event at the uh, Villarica work session, or maybe it was the meeting, but uh, they're concerned that part of the proposal for that uh, connector from Miller, Mirror Lake down into downtown is going to affect some of their homes. I mean, maybe all of them even. Um, now, I, I guess that's not officially approved yet. I think that still it can be voted on mm -hmm. by the Villarica City Council. So if you were to w win this race, I mean, you actually have the potential to be on City Council by November. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's they right. Yeah, they don't want to leave that till uh, January maybe you know because it's a vacant spot um, there's a possibility that the city the city has suggested that they may have to use eminent domain um, if some of those people don't want to give up that home for that connector how do you feel about um, that issue and then using eminent domain so I've asked a lot of questions about this um, it I was under the impression that it was specifically for golf carts, and it is not. Um, it, this, this is a safety concern issue. A lot of uh, or those residents over there, if a train is blocking those tracks, or if a train even comes through, should I say, um, there, there's no way for emergency vehicles to be able to get over to them. There's one way in, one way out. Um, so that's a concern. Uh, so this this cut through road, to my understanding, and again, I it, this is one of those where I don't, I'm not privileged enough at this point to have that that all of the information, um, and so what I'm understanding about it at one point was it was going to be the majority of the houses, and then it turned into it was just going to be two of the houses. Uh, and now I'm hearing three or four. So there's a lot of information left to be answered. Mm -hmm. uh, so before any kind of answer from me were to be given, I would like more information about it first. Uh, with that said, eminent domain is, 
something that from what I've heard from talking to some of the council members is that that's not something that's being said right now. They're trying to work it out with those homeowners. Uh, and that yeah, would it's been definitely a suggestion that, you know, we'll give you as much money as you need, but you know, who's to say how much they need. And in those houses, people have lived in those houses their entire right. life and they're paid off. And it's well, a and, community. And one of the things with that <laughs> is, is that if they don't have a house payment and they are used to not having a house payment, we're going to make them relocate mm-hmm. and have a house payment. I mean, like it, it just puts a different perspective on things. Do you um, pay attention to social media a lot and see the concerns of residents and you know things they're mad about? I do. I, I do. Yeah. I do. Do you, uh, do you, you think you take criticism? Well, I, I do. Um, I think that constructive criticism is how we grow. Well, then don't read Facebook because oh. it's not constructive. It's well, <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. And I've definitely learned that um, throughout throughout the couple of years. Yeah. Um, what, what's the biggest issue? that? Because you've, you've done some campaigning. You've been out there talking to people. What's the biggest thing that they're talking to you about? It's like, you know, I want to see this. I mean, you know, I, I suspect that some people are asking you to fix the issues out in Israel. Um, <laughs> like, well, that's not what we do. But what, what, what are the biggest concerns locally for Villarica? Clear across the board, it's the amount of growth and the infrastructure issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, the infrastructure issues are a huge concern for for the residents. Um, when I went out speaking to some of uh, the residents over on North Avenue, one of the biggest concerns was the uh, water flow issues as well as uh, the the dirty water. Uh, I know that the city has worked on, has already approved uh, some of the work that's going to happen over there, and I'm not sure I need to look into exactly what all they are planning to do, uh, because these are big issues for for those residents. Are you able to, um, how much time do you expect to commit to being a council person? Do you see it as a a full-time gig? Well, it's technically a Mm part-time gig, uh, but I mean, as far as how much time I can commit to it, um, my my schedule is dictated by myself. Uh, so I'm able to manipulate my schedule. Uh, so it, you know, the the scheduling and and we prioritize. And I'm a mom. I'm a mom mm-hmm. of four. So it's a, it's a lot of balancing act, anyways. You know, and and as a mom. And as a business owner and every volunteer position that I have been involved in, it's it's balancing all of that. And that's just people should understand that. I mean, right. again, it is a part time job and people do have families, but, you know, want, want, wanting to serve. And, and speaking of wanting to serve, I mean, if, if you don't win this, would you continue to try and um, volunteer and be a part of the city oh, in some way? Absolutely. Okay. Very good. Absolutely. Um, in... I think it was July of this year, there was uh, something shared on the Villarica Police Department Facebook page um, that that offended a lot of people, a story that went viral, and um, there was a a letter put out, a comment put out by the mayor pretty quickly afterwards, um, you know, explained that I think he was embarrassed by it, uh, and, 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 you know, who wouldn't be, but but as far as the timing of putting that letter out, do do you feel like, and, and I know some police officers over there definitely felt like they were thrown under the bus after that you know that's uh, in theory that's been resolved and they're uh, you know making some changes but but the response from the mayor at that point it did offend some police officers are, are you aware of that response and, and and how do you feel about that I, the timing I am so I am and, and many people may not know this um, but I am I come from a family of law enforcement so law enforcement is near and dear to my heart um, and I understand about supporting those police officers. The, the statement that was released was released prematurely. And it, it's our job to allow the chief to do his job um, before anything is brought up. Any kind of public statements, we should have waited until all of the invest in the the investigation excuse me is complete Mm -hmm. did did you talk to any police officers have any of them talked to you about that incident no i haven't heard directly from any of them but i did read some of those comments um to where there were concerns about that do you think that the uh, main street 
downtown? I mean, being that you are in downtown, do you think it's it's healthy? Are there are there maybe any ordinances or, or rules that are put upon the small business owners there that uh, could change and let it bloom and blossom a little more? Well, I think that it is important that – where am I going with this? So let me back up. The question was the importance of – what well, do you think the downtown, I mean, do you see it healthy? Or are there any, anything that's restricting the, the downtown from being, you know, better if possible? Well, I think the downtown needs a facelift, so to speak. And by that, I don't mean that it needs a lot. We need, we need to do, um, we need to do some things to just make it look a little bit better, a little bit more presentable. But overall, downtown is fantastic. Um, I mean, I've been downtown for 10 years now. I love it. A little bit, yeah. That's right. Um, But the, I don't know. I mean, I think that, I think that we um, continue to support our businesses and we we do need to make it a little more pedestrian friendly, mm-hmm. um, but I like the downtown feel of what Main Street is, and definitely want to keep keep it moving in that direction, um, attracting the correct businesses, maybe um, maybe some more places to eat, more places to shop, things like that. Time right now is eight forty seven. Stephanie Warmoth, our guest on this morning's Community Voice Program, one of two candidates for the uh, vacant uh, Ward Three seat. Uh, on Villarica City Council. Um, I don't know. Let's go ahead and take our, our, our break here, and I'll come back and uh, we'll, we'll wrap up our program. About 10, 11 minutes left on our show. Again, Stephanie Warmoth, our guest this morning. Early voting. This is the second day of the second week, and uh, third week next week for early voting. And then Election Day is November the 7th. I think in Villarica they can vote at Powell Park early next week for all of October 30th. Next week. Do you know how many people, um, how many numbers have come out of Villarica over here in Carroll County yet? They no, I'm not those? sure about that. Okay. I think there was like 300 early voters total maybe last week. But, oh, um, wow. Yeah. All right, 847. We'll take our uh, final break. Come back. Community Voice brought to you by Tanner Health System and Oak Mountain Academy. Oak Mountain Academy is an innovative school of academic excellence celebrating a 61-year legacy. I'm Patrick Uran, head of school, inviting you to join us for our annual fall festival. This Friday at 3.30, join us at the OMA gym for food, fun, and fellowship. Costume, games, raffles, and competitions are just a few of our fall festival exciting activities. For more information, visit us at oakmountain.us. Discover your journey at OMA. Prepare, explore, and achieve. Health is a journey. It's making better choices, even when it's not easy. It's taking care of yourself and the people you love. At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org. Eight forty-eight. Welcome back to the WLBB Community Voice News Talk thirteen thirty FM one hundred six point three. My name is Colin Worthington. My guest is Stephanie Warmoth. She is one of two candidates running for that uh, vacant Ward three seat in, uh, in in Villa Rica. What, one of the uh, you talked about you know, downtown and attracting more businesses and things. One of the, the duties of a uh, city council person will be deciding on rezoning requests. When do you feel comfortable telling somebody that uh, now nah, you can't do that with your property? When government starts getting involved with what we can tell people to do with with their property, that's when things tend to get a little sticky, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, we have to make sure that we are doing what's best for the city, but as well as allowing allowing people to make those decisions about their properties. Stephanie Warmoth, our guest on this morning's Community Voice program. Um, other duties, um, of course, is uh, in the budget. We talked about that and selecting a uh, millage rate, approving a millage rate each year, which does have an effect on property taxes. What um, you know, what, what would go through your head? What would you, what do you need to see, to read, uh, to understand, to determine whether the millage rate should be uh, increased or maintained or or rolled back? Right. Well, I mean, you've got to look at that budget. You've got to look at that budget and see exactly where your funds need to go uh, in order to decide on something like that. Mm-hmm. 
Well, initially, I mean, they started out this year. Um, I think it was proposed that, hey, we're going to maintain the millage rate, but it would have given Villarica some additional funds, and it would have uh, collected uh, – as a whole, from Villarica taxpayers, it would have collected more money. So, you know, as a whole, taxpayers, uh, there have been a tax increase. But uh, in the end, I think they they decided to roll that back, didn't they? They did. Yeah. So I spoke at that council meeting about rolling back the millage rate. And I, my stance for that was that we were paying taxes on an inflated market. And I don't know how well perceived that that comment was, uh, but I mean, I certainly couldn't sell my house right now for what, what the tax value was. Value. I mean, because one way you look at it, it's like, hey, my house is worth more. I mean, that, you know, that's great, but if you're going to pay additional taxes on it, I mean, do, do you feel the burden is, um, would you want to blame the, the, the appraisers for a tax increase? If, uh, you know, when it comes down, you have the decision to say, hey, we're going to maintain it or, or roll it back. Because there, there is that. There is that. There are those bodies that, that say, well, you know, heck, we, we didn't uh, make your property higher, so it's not our fault. And then they maintain the millage rate. How, how would you uh, sell that if you had to do something like maintaining the millage rate? Okay, so that there's a whole bunch of questions in what you just yeah. asked. <laughs> <laughs> so as far as the, the rolling back, again, my stance was based on the inflated market. Um, it was, in reality, I'm not going to be able to sell my house for what it was appraised for. Mm -hmm. Now, the best that I could do is to dispute that with, with the county, which is what the majority of homeowners have done. Everyone that I've talked to has said that that's what they, they had done. But some of those houses, they still were... Um, what is it that I'm looking for? They were they were denied uh, that that dispute, mm -hmm. and so they're still paying on that inflated market. Okay. Stephanie Warren with our guest on this morning's Community Voice program, one of two candidates running for uh, uh, the Ward 3 seat on Villarica City Council. Have you been a supporter of SPLOST in the past? Have Special I Purpose Local Option Sales Tax, have you voted in favor of that? Well, I've never had an option to vote in favor of. Well, no, that, that's, that's for uh, for voters. I mean, for, for residents when they vote. Oh, I got you. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's money that that can go into where it needs to go. So, absolutely. So, you'd be somebody to support that in the future. Um, the tax allocation district. How much um, have you learned about that over the last maybe two or three years? And, and, and what are your feelings on um, how that is uh, conducted? I have learned a lot about it. Um, it can the tax allocated district. Uh, it can be it can be a little confusing when you first hear about it. I've asked lots of questions to try and figure out uh, exactly what that is. So the this land that was purchased um, by Fuquay uh, Development and the the this land was undevelopable. It was not able to be developed on. I'm sorry, and. So, and I think we've stopped talking about that. That, that that's how it originated because this, right. this property was not going to be attractive to anybody else, and I, that's I think that's where it goes back to. But yeah, I'm sorry. No, you're yeah. good. You're good. Well, I, I just haven't. I don't think I've said that in the last six, seven, eight months, and I think people forget about that. How that got. How that yeah. Got so this land wouldn't have been able to be developed otherwise. Mm -hmm. So the good thing about the Fuquay, um, and I, I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, uh, as we all have. <laughs> Times, but the the good thing with this is is yes they're bringing in residential areas but they're also bringing in that commercial which brings in more revenue for the city mm -hmm. with with jobs sales tax all of that how about approving we, we talked about approving rezonings how about approving um property for for um you know multi house multi-family developments um, versus, uh, you know, single family developments. W what's your perspective on that in the next four or five years as far as how you would vote? I think we have to be very careful. Uh, it's all about balanced growth. And right now we are so heavy on residential, the, the apartments and the townhomes that are being approved um, are, are not making it very balanced. Uh, so we're bringing in all these people uh, to have them leave and go work outside of Villarica. They're going to work outside of Villarica. They're going to eat and um, shop outside of Villarica, where those could be tax dollars that stay within our city. Mm -hmm. how, how much of a part would you want to be, uh, and how would you do this as far as attracting these businesses and, and restaurants coming to Villarica? What, what, what are some of the things that you would sell to them about the city of gold? 
uh, to make it a, an attractive thing for them to come consider setting up in Villarica? I think that a lot of that comes into play when we're operating as we should. And then those businesses are going to naturally be attracted here. But there are also other incentives that can be given to those businesses in order to get them in here. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite thing about Villarica? Oh, I love the hometown feel. Mm-hmm. I love the 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 just the warm fuzzy feeling you get with Villarica. I mean, if you've ever gone to a homecoming game at the high school, like there's just nothing like it. Do you think Villarica um, promotes the the things that are you know like the the the, the the Coca-Cola connection, I think, is, is a huge thing, and I'm not sure that they take advantage of that, promoting that as much. Um, but, you know, maybe you do. Do you think Bill Rica does a good job promoting what uh, what is great about it elsewhere? I mean, to, to bring in, um, you know, people off the highway or things like that to stop at our businesses? Uh, I think that Main Street does a really good job. I mean, we've got some really good resources as far as the uh, Main Street board. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, I served on there for seven years. Um, So I think that they do a really good job about promoting different activities, um, different events that are going on. It's been said that to pay for the infrastructure um, needed with the growth is that um, you need more growth in Villarica. You're going to need that growth to pay for uh, infrastructure improvements. How much have you been uh, paying attention to uh, like the water needs in Villarica, the issue with water and other uh, infrastructure? (laughs) So the, I mean, I know that we have a lot of work to do as far as our infrastructure goes. Um, And we have two options. We can either buy from outside as we have been doing from Carroll County and from Douglas County, or we can become independent. Becoming independent is definitely going to cost us more in the long run, but I think that that's where ideally everybody would like to be. Uh, But again, it's it's that balance of making it work within the budget. Who are some of your mentors, or I mean, whether it's a family member or somebody that you know, or maybe somebody um, you know elsewhere that you look up to? Who who is somebody that you would trust for guidance, I guess, in making decisions? So I call my dad quite a bit and I'm like, hey, you know, tell me, tell me about this and tell me about that. Um, He was involved in, in politics. He was a police or yes, he's a retired police officer. Um, So he, he definitely is somebody that I go to for a lot of guidance. Mm -hmm. Um, My grandmother who has already passed away. um, I mean, she was, she was also my go-to person. Mm -hmm. we got about two minutes left. So I'm heading out to uh, work in the morning. I'm leaving, I'm walking out of my porch and here comes Stephanie Warmoth. And you're like, Hey, just want two minutes of your time. What are you going to tell me to uh, encourage me to uh, vote for you on election day? I'm more than willing to do this job. I'm ready to do this job. Uh, I will be the voice for the citizens of Villarica. I will I will go to bat for every single one of them. Um, and that's just who I am and what I do. You have a Facebook page where people I can do. get more information, maybe contact you if they have any questions that, uh, that I didn't ask today. I do. It's Stephanie Warmoth for City Council on Facebook. Um, I'm available by phone and email. Uh, my phone number, I'm going to go ahead and give it out because that's what I do. It's 770-595-2295. I'm available by call text. Uh, email is info at stephaniewarmoth.com. And... People can reach out anytime they have any questions. Stephanie Warmoth is one of two candidates running for that vacant Ward 3 seat on uh, Carrollton, or on Villarica City Council. I called Bob Oglum Villarica City Council the other day, so I might as well uh, switch it back. I'm glad uh, I'm not the only one getting tongue-tied right, today. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice to meet you. Thank you, you for too. coming down and talking about your campaign, and good luck. Uh, Thank remember, you. Remember, early voting continues this week, and next week it will actually be open in uh, Villarica at Powell Park. So, uh, you know, get out there and vote early before the uh, November 7th election. Thank you for watching and listening this morning. Uh, You're listening to Community Voice here on News Talk 1330 FM 106.3.